Video GIE Tools and Techniques Essentials of Donning, Doffing and Changes in Endoscopy Practice to Reduce the Risk of Spreading COVID-19 During Endoscopy The authors declare no disclosures relevant to this work. COVID-19 pandemic has resulted in significant disruption to normal endoscopy practice around the world. Endoscopy is classified as aerosol generating procedure, so stringent measures are needed to prevent viral transmission before, during and after endoscopy. We aim to illustrate various measures that can be adopted by endoscopy departments to minimize the risk of transmission of this infection. My name is Pradeep Bandari. I'm a consultant gastroenterologist based in Portsmouth, the UK. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate in the next few minutes how our unit has adapted to cope with this COVID-19 crisis. So we made a series of changes in which we put on the PPE. Then when we go into the endoscopy suite, our suites have been completely transformed and look very different from before. So we'll demonstrate that we made some minor uh, adjustments and adaptations in the way we perform endoscopy and I'll show all those changes to you. And finally, uh, the safe way of removing the PPE. Donning station. So this is our donning station, uh, which is an area where we're going to put all our PPE safe because we can't keep this inside the endoscopy room because it will get contaminated. Uh, so I'll put uh, the shoe cover on my shoe uh, before moving on to put the rest of the PPE. I'll wash my hands uh, with the spray for 30 seconds. So we'll put some gloves now. And once the gloves are on, uh, I'll wear the apron. Using this uh, water repellent uh, aprons, uh, which should cover me completely. Uh, so once the apron is on, uh, I'm now ready uh, to put my mask. Uh, we are fortunate enough to have these uh, FFP3 masks, which has been pre-fitted for me, so I know exactly how to put it on. So I just need to squeeze this in to make it airtight. So we'll get the cap. And we're using these visors now to protect our face. Uh, they are, they can be cleaned and reused. Um, finally, I put on an extra pair of gloves. So we will now go into our endoscopy suite. You can see here our donning station was outside the endoscopy, and we'll go in now. Endoscopy. Tips to reduce contamination. Before this crisis, the room used to be full of accessories, uh, extra furniture, uh, recording equipment, stacks, all kinds of things. So it was a pretty crowded room. But now you can see that the room is pretty much empty apart from the stack, the screen and the scope that's required to endoscope the patient and the dietary machine. So we made some minor adjustments in our endoscopes to adapt to this crisis. Uh, in the past, we were using a combination of reusable as well as disposable, but now we change over completely to disposable buttons and buns, so that there is minimal possibility of leakage from this. So the next step we take during endoscopy is change the way we hold the endoscope. Conventionally, we've always held the endoscope like this, when performing the endoscopy on the patient. When we do this, the, these spokes, which are generating the aerosol and releasing into the environment, are very close to the endoscopist with a possible risk. So what we do now is let the left hand drop down like this. Uh, that way, these spokes are facing away from the endoscopist, minimizing the risk of any contamination. I'll show you another measure which you can take very effectively anywhere in the world by using a little plastic sleeve like this you see uh, it's a just a plastic sleeve with elasticated ends and you pass your endoscope through this so now uh, 
we have uh, the aerosol generating ports within this sleeve. Uh, I can still press the button. Uh, these buttons can still be pressed and used. Uh, and I'll put a little sellotape to make this airtight compartment. And again, that way, keep the aerosols contained within this. First patient is a 55 years old man who is inpatient with upper GI bleeding. Endoscopy showed an ulcerated Barrett's lesion with no active bleeding. By switching from air or carbon dioxide insufflation to water immersion endoscopy, we believe this reduces positive pressure in the GI tract and therefore minimizes aerosol generation. Second patient is a 60 years old lady with recently diagnosed cervical cancer and two colonic hot spots on PET scan. Endoscopic assessment and histology were urgently needed to plan chemo radiotherapy. We performed underwater assessment to minimize discomfort and reduce aerosol generation during colonoscopy. Doffing station. So now I've finished the endoscopy procedure. So traditionally we would remove all our gloves and aprons in the room, but now we do not do that. Now we go to a dedicated doffing room uh, which is being developed purely to take our PPE off in a safe way without contaminating the environment. So here we have eight stations where we will sequentially take off all our PPE and finally wash our hands and exit from that door. So we should not touch the gloves from outside. Put your finger inside the glove, pull it off there. Here uh, we just use some gel. You can see here my hands are sterile now. I'll take my goggles the visors and put it in there. The next station is where we take our gown and apron off. First thing is to pick up your gown like this and roll it in uh, like this so that the droplets don't fall off. And then we take this and we need help from behind so somebody takes that string off. The whole thing comes off like this and it goes straight in. I will now take off my second pair of gloves and then we gel our hands again for 30 seconds. So this is the station where we take mask and hat on. Best tricks to use is hook our fingers into the mask, bend over and drop everything straight in, keeping the specs on. Uh, and I now wash my hands for 30 seconds with soap and water. So once you wash your hands, you can see I came into the dolphin room from this door which is leading to the endoscopy room so we cannot go back in there. We have to exit out from another door straight into the clean area. So I'm now going to leave the dolphin area through the separate door straight out into the corridor. We acknowledge that the exact measures adopted by each unit will depend on a range of factors including availability of PPE, logistics and local protocols. However, our video should provide broad principles which can be adapted to suit local circumstances.